Okay, I think we should get started. And we need to find some music for this, you know, first few minutes when we're waiting for people. As we have this extended network all over the place, we should get, you know, local music from the different, uh, you know, regions of the world. So welcome to the second seminar for our TinyML Academic Network uh, group. And for those of you that uh, did not attend the previous one, I'm Marco Zanaro from the ACTP. And I welcome you to this second talk. There is a really uh, short presentation about our uh, presenter today, Professor Marcelo Arvai from Brazil, from Universidad Federal de Itajuba, I hope that's pronounced correctly, which will give us um, instruction on how to set up the software tools that we will then use in the ICTP workshop in a couple of weeks. Uh, next week, we will have another seminar. It will be more of a meeting. And we want to discuss about our TinyML network, the way forward, how we will organize our work. And we also have few case studies from network members. So some really interesting and I hope inspiring projects that use TinyML. Don't forget about the ACTP workshop. That is a one week activity that will be held from October 18 to 22. And you need to register to that activity by October 8. So we already have 200 uh, applicants. So Make sure you have your seat for the for the workshop, and I hope you all have the web page. I will put that in the chat, just in case. And before giving the floor to Marcelo, if you have any questions, you can write them in the chat. So then Brian and myself will kind of moderate the questions and forward them to Marcelo to answer them. So let me stop my sharing. And please, Marcelo, you can get started. OK, good morning, everyone. Uh, I think that uh, you, are, you, are, you are seeing my, my screen, correct? OK, perfect. Yes, you can see. OK, Thank, thanks, Dr. Zanaro. Uh, it, it's, uh, it's a pleasure to be with you guys here today. And uh, as Professor Marco said, the idea is to Prepare, prepare you guys, not entering in details about the theory, but how we can handle the main tool, the main, the main software tool that we will use in our next seminar uh, in a couple of weeks, that is the Edge Impulse Studio. Uh, as, as, as you have been following Professor Zanaro, uh, we, at the beginning, we have planned to have, uh, to have our, our kit, that the, the, it will be this one, to 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 really have the the, the um, let's say projects doing in embedded devices this will not happen due to the do the, the, the the ship shortage that we are having in, in all over the world it will not happen in this seminar but you have the next one probably in a couple of months and before that we will also have some uh, some special sessions to help you guys to set up the software all the software and, and libraries to set up the Arduino and everything to run the next the next one or to to move the applications to the embedded device and probably you do this in in different languages I, we can have different sessions this will be discussed in the next the next uh, session next week we with all, all of us we discuss with the best way to do that okay so going to our presentation first thing very quickly uh, as Professor Zenaro, I'm a, I'm a volunteer professor at the University uh, Federal of Itajuba in Brazil. It's, so your, your pronunciation is good. It's good for, for us. It's an Indian name. It's interesting. It's a, it's a very old name, Itajuba. And uh, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a master in, in data, science, data science. I made a course here in uh, UDD University, Universidad del Desarrollo in Chile. I'm an engineer from, uh, from a UNIFE in Itajuba. And uh, and I have been in the last years, uh, have been writing about electronics, TNML, machine learning, etc., in several different publications. And uh, recently this year, we are part of this group at TNML 4D, uh, together with the Professor Zanaro, Professor Vijay, uh, Professor Brian from Harvard. We are uh, organizing and working this this uh, several seminars uh, all over the world. Okay. 
as you saw in the next in the last seminar with professor vj it was a fantastic overview about what 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 really is uh, tnml we realized we saw that uh, tnml is a is a is a is a field that's growing very very fast doing billions of uh, uh, this, uh, devices you no know, endpoint devices that that, that uh, iot has provided to us in all over the world okay so because that you know and we have a lot of sensors we are we we, we are having this all this data in general part of that only a small part of that sent to the to the cloud to being you know working in, in machine learning machine learning models mo models to to take to take let's say to take a, a device from them to take information more more to take taking what to know what's going on with the TNML, the idea is different. is is exactly go go on the device, do the analytics inside the device. Okay, so it's a kind of a marriage the the, uh, the algorithms that we use in machine learning. Okay, to the embed the hardware and software. Okay, and the idea is to do this with a very low power consumption, and because and why that? Because we would like we like to have this always working, so we can have a device a sensor, for example, in a machine with a accelerometer that you can monitor that machine you know, all the time and only get information or send information uh, 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 out of that specific sensor when anomaly de uh, is detected. The machine is not, not working well, for example. So that's the, the general idea of the, the TNML. Okay, not confused. We have also. We, 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 uh, I, I suppose that you have learned a lot about uh, about edge edge ML or edge AI, something like. It's okay. It's our offline devices that uh, work not that works not on the cloud. Okay, but it's not battery operated. So in our focus with this seminar is really, really, really talking about very tiny devices. Okay, like like with small Arduinos, you no know, very small. Microprocessors, as Professor Vijay said, that you can you can uh, take advantage of that. Okay, perfect. So, as Professor Vijay said, the TNML we have two main areas. We we should train the data. To everything starts with the data, and when the the, the data the the, the model is the, the the model is trained, we took that model and embedded them in a in a in a device. Okay, this is TNML. Okay, and uh, how how this happened? What's really is, is it happened? Everything is stacked with data, as we saw. Okay, this is only a connection. What Professor Vijay said last week, said two weeks ago. So everything is stacked with data. When you collect the data, usually we, we do the the we pre-process the data. Okay, we need to do transformations, and this is very key in uh, engineering field. Okay, because usually the raw data is not prepared to be used in machine learning models. So when you have the data processed, we need to, okay, in this case, see what we have with a, as, as the, the input, develop or design a model and train a model. Okay, perfect. When you have the model, we need to see or verify if the model is, is, is okay. Uh, or how about the accuracy? The model is running okay. How about the memory? Ah, uh, the model is working perfectly, but I need it. 10 megabytes of memory, but my device has only 50, 500K. So, so those are the, oh, the, the, the cases that you need to evaluate, okay, and optimize. And I need to return here, train again, change the hyperparameters, and everything this we will discuss in our, in our seminar, okay? Perfect. Once I'm happy with my model, what I need to do? Convert it. How we do that? We take that big model that usually, you know, I, we, we do this in, in big machines, shrink the, that model to put that model inside of those tiny device okay mm -hmm. and when we do this we deploy we put in, in, in the device and do the and make the inference this is very important i say here we have two things that was what was in the previous slide from professor, professor vj one thing is the training when we have the data a lot of data we do the training. Training, we will define a model. We find the parameters that will that you make the model to be running in the field, inside the, 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 the embedded device, together with the sensor, together with the physical world. That, that's the key thing. So we are not making training or 
big machine learnings here in the in the in the in the small device what you do is inference okay so so this is important where is very important where uh, where we do the things this is very important where the things happen okay so as i said when i collect the data okay we will collect data okay from small devices like this one or even from data sets that will collect data sets or every a lot of people collect data from sensors all over the world we took those data and 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 collect after that all the pre-processing design training evaluation everything usually is doing in the cloud when i say cloud could be my computer could be you know in a collab could be in google and in, in, uh, in microsoft in uh, in amazon whatever some place that to have uh, where i can find mechanisms to take the data and train that model and after that i do the inference and the inference will be done here at the device okay so this is where but how how i can do this no usually you do this using a very good and developed uh, 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 frameworks for example, like uh, TensorFlow from Google or PyTorch from Microsoft or Cafe, there is a lot of frameworks that help us from, from years, people are developing and using that to make all, all those stuff, okay? Mainly to design a model, to train the model, everything. In our case here, we will focus uh, with the Google tools, that is the TensorFlow, okay? Google has a TensorFlow, uh, uh, let's say a full TensorFlow package, that usually is used for design, took the data, makes uh, help to make some transformations or some, some pre-processing also, uh, prepare the model, make the training, optimizing, et cetera. After that, I have a, a, another package, it's TensorFlow Lite, that uh, we are talking about a package that has maybe probably two, three years. I heard the first time two years ago. And uh, with this package, what, what the uh, TensorFlow do? With uh, with the with the TensorFlow Lite, he took the model and and put a lot of uh, technology, as we saw some of them with uh, with Professor VJ last uh, last time, and shrink them to put inside the microprocessor. So they, you know, I I, I for example, I I turn off some some neurons, I connect some synapses out, I change the the parameters that was trained using, for example, float points with four bytes to integer with one one byte, we, we call this quantization. So after that, we go and make the inference with TensorFlow Lite Micro. And as Professor Vijay said, this is not easy. So besides to know all this, uh, what's happened is we also must understand C or C++, for example, if you want to, because after we have the inference, we need to took that model and put the model inside the, the, the embedded device. Also, it's very important, I know Python, because Python is the base that we will use here, no? to, you know, to, to, to capture data, to help, you know, like using Pandas or NumPy to, to, to work or to make transformations, changing the data, no? before I enter in the, to do the training. No? Yeah, of course, you know, and all those packages, like for example, TensorFlow, the, all those, those frameworks we run over Python. So to learn this, uh, let's say a uh, TNML embedded engineer, you know, must know Python, C, TensorFlow, TensorFlow Lite, TensorFlow Micro, all those stuff. So you see, we are talking about a mix of two words. It's very common, for example, people from data science, my colleagues at, uh, at the university here in Chile, they know very well how to use TensorFlow, how to design a model, et cetera, but they don't know, you know how, I, how I use C++ to, to take this and put inside a, to, to make the, the uh, microprocessor work. You know? And the opposite, I know a lot of friends, or when I, I did my engineering course, I know a lot about you know, microprocessors, how I programming microprocessors, but I have no idea about what machine learning is, how I can, can mix with that. So uh, a, a kind of tool appears in the market, I would say less than two years ago, one year and a half, 
and this was was created by some engineers from ARM, from you know, from 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 some some areas or from the microprocessor area, and realizing that it was very difficult or not easy for them for 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 us general engineers to understand data sizing, data science, and vice versa. So they create a kind of a st called studio, no? That uh, and the studio, uh, what what the studio does is try to go from data collection to deploy a model. So start from the device and, and create a model and return to device. This is the Edge Impulse uh, Studio, okay? Okay, but how, how, how do they do this? When you, when you saw this part here, I only change it. What the studio does is the same thing that, uh, that we, we, we saw with the normal machine learning flow but only they use different names. So I put here to, to, to you guys to have an, uh, a reference. We'll do a kind of example today, our live example, so you can see each one of them. But, but of course, I, when I collect the data, the data will, 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 will be handled by a part of uh, the studio that call uh, the data set handle. After that, we need to pre define what you do with the pre-processing and what do you do with the model, model development. And they call this the impulse. It's a name that they give to them, but uh, it's only a name for this, these two, two tasks here. After that, you need to evaluate, to evaluate, to optimize, and then do this with a part of the studio that they call the test part. And then the deploy model, they, not, not surprisingly, they call it deploy, deploy model, okay? Perfect. So this is what do you do uh, today? And this we will try to understand this, how we go from data to a model using Edge Impulse tool. That was the main tool that we use in our, um, in our seminar in two, weeks, in two weeks from now. Okay, perfect. So what's, what's Edge Impulse? What is Edge Impulse? Edge Impulse Studio is they call embedded machine learning platforms. Some, some people say, ah, oh, it's a kind of auto machine learning device or tool. Okay, but the important is, is a tool that goes, as I said, uh, starting from, starting from, um, from a, a device. Yeah, and uh, when I talk a device, could be a cell phone, could be an Arduino, could be, you know, a, a Raspberry Pico, you know? could be a, a special nice device like this one, but, what we will not put use, for example, a lot of people ask, uh, uh, for example, Arduino Uno. No, not this case, because Arduino Uno, for example, there is um, the microprocessor is not, not powerful enough. I don't have memory enough so to do that. So usually, when I talk about uh, microprocessor or endpoint devices to develop machine learning or uh, team machine learning, we talk about devices that are, for example, make a reference uh, ARM uh, Core uh, M0, M0 Plus, for example, that, uh, for example, I have a dual of that in the, in, the, in, the, in the Raspberry Pico, or a Core M4 with the Arduino, Arduino Nano that we'll use in the next, in the next uh, not the, the, the next one, but uh, the uh, uh, two seminars from now, and so on, or uh, uh, ARM A, for example, from the, the cellular phones and so on, okay? Perfect. And uh, this is the way, this is the, 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 the face of the platform. What we must do is only enter in, in edgeimpulse.com. Okay, we can enter here, okay? And when you enter in, uh, in this platform, what do you see? It's a, it's, it's a browser. Everything will be done in the cloud. So we, 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 we take the data from, from, the, from the world, from the real world send to the cloud, to the studio. The studio will run, will run all the workflow, the machine learning workflow for us, okay? And at the end, we'll have the deploy, okay? Perfect, we'll do everything. The first thing that you must do is to, of course, you enter your name here, you enter with your, enter with, with your uh, uh, email, you define your password and you get an account in Edge Impulse. You can do now if you are if you guys are, you can do now. It's edgeimpulse.com. You can you can you can uh, do this. Okay, I have my account. Uh, once you have account, okay, we'll do the login here. 
okay? And uh, for example, let's say here, um, when you go, when we enter in the login, what the first thing that they, the, 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 the studio you ask you is to create a project. So let, let's create a project. Let's say teeny ML for D setup, something like that. So I you create, I you create a project. Okay, when I create a project, the project is here. The, the the studio will try to guide you what you should do. This is interesting. It's 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 a, 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 this is one thing very interesting. As I as I as I told you guys. This studio, Edge Impulse Studio, was developer, or they sought about a tool for embedded engineers, people that doesn't know machine learning very well, or doesn't know, that not so familiar with all the flow. So interesting, they, the studio not only guide us what to do, but also give us some ideas, like uh, use this hyperparameter, change this, set, set the software in this way. They will give us a general idea, so you can continue and, and, and develop the project. So, okay, so in our case, let's say we use accelerate data, okay? So let's get started, perfect. Uh, at this point, I have the project is, is, is set up, let's say, well, I did nothing yet. Uh, two things here, this is the first page that appears for us here is the dashboard here. Every step that we do in our project will be concentrated here. For example, all the data that I, I will capture at the end, we can go here and you see the data here, okay? You can download the data, for example. The model that we have developed, we can download the model as a Keras, Keras model. We can download the TensorFlow Lite model. So everything that we do here, we can get this offline, and work in my computer or work in another project. I can have everything in, to the model, okay? Perfect. Uh, if you want to change the name of the project, it's only you, you click here and change, change the name, okay? One thing very important that I like it very much. If you go here, if you go the page, if you go page down, for example, you have project information here. Of course, we are talking about the lab labeling method. There's one label and here, they give us a several options about uh, suppose uh, uh, they in fact because when I working uh, uh, when I working in, with the studio the studio doesn't know what it will be the device that we will put at the end or where we will put this model this model is a is a mathematical entity that we only when we, uh, say training a, mo a model we will define the the parameters for for a mathematical a, a, a mathematical model. Uh, that at the end we need to shrink that to, to, to put inside the, the microprocessor, the, the embedded device. So for example, you choose here, what am I doing? Ah, I'm using, uh, uh, I'm using my, my, my MacBook, for example, here. So of course it will be very fast, but I say, no, no, no. I will make the project, what you have in mind when you do this kind of the project, for example, is Arduino Nano 33 BLE Sense. That is, that is this, this, the, the, the this micro this, this developing board here that we use in our in our in our next seminar so so let's keep keep the Arduino nano what's happening is everything that we do with the studio the studio gave us idea of latency uh how much time this model will take how much time to take to be to, to when we do the inference how much time uh to pre-process a pre-process a data so you can have an idea. Ah, I did a fantastic model. I got 100%, 99% of accuracy, but, but, but uh, the model takes 10 seconds of latency. Wow, uh, makes sense or not? Well, maybe I'm, 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 I'm trying to understand what's going on with a, with, a, with a machine that is running, you know, I don't know. It's a several rotations per second, hundreds of rotations per second, 10 seconds. It's, it's a nightmare. I can blow everything. So no, 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 no. So 10 seconds is not enough for me, but maybe one millisecond or 10 milliseconds. Okay. I can, I can survive. I can handle 10 milliseconds to do that specific task. Okay. So the latency is very important. 
But this, this is only a reference for us, okay? The model will be the model. And only you can change here and see the difference, how this model will change, depend on how powerful is your microprocessor, okay? Perfect. Okay. Uh, at this, uh, okay, this is important also. This, uh, when you go, when you go to, to the left here, you have all you know, the, these steps. It, these are the steps that you, that you follow when you do a project. This is, at the end of the day, these steps are exactly our machine, machine learning workflow. Okay. Let me return you quickly here. I think that I can, I can, I can show you. Yeah, everything, uh, everything that I'm telling you, telling you here, guys. Uh, I think at the end of today, something like we'll send a PDF file to all of you, so we have very detail. We, we try to put in detail what you must press, what what's going on, so you can follow uh, or, or or at least repeat what we have done today and go more uh, from now to the seminar. I I please invite you guys to do that. Okay. And uh, okay, and uh, we, we we discuss this everything. We're talking. Look, if you look here to the to the left the left panel that I have, what's have what we have here is exactly the sequence that we have discussed before. The sequence that was explained very well and stressed by Professor Vijay a couple of weeks ago. So this is the machine learning or the tiny machine learning workflow that we will follow all our lives as a machine learning, uh, in, in, in TNML or machine learning in, in engineers. Okay, perfect. The only difference, uh, remember you guys, when you talk about Edge Impulse Studio, they, they gave different names. So usually we start defining the Edge device that we will use, we acquire, we will acquire the data, this will put inside a data set, and after that, we need to train the model. We'll do this defining uh, uh, impulse. And then when do I define an impulse? What do I doing? We will pre-process. We will do the, the, process, the pre-processing of the data, design a model, train the model, etc. After that, when I'm okay with that, we should, we should test the, 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 the data flow and we do tests. I can do it in two different ways. I can took all the, the test data that you have separate and not use it for training. I can train everything. It's normal practice in machine learning and, and define uh, how the accuracy will be. Or we can live, live tests. I can took my, for example, my, end, my, my, my phone as I end the device or my Arduino and connect to the studio, connected online with the studio and do the inference. So what the studio do, they download they download the model to the device, and we can check that online. This, of course, is not for all devices, but for, for the devices that are, let's say, homologated by them. If you're not homologated, you don't do this online. But what you do, you have the. But at the end, you have the, you have the your library that you will develop and use your model. Okay, and at the end, the the, the important thing will return to the to, to the device. Because it's also important. I like this uh, the way that they did this machine learning. Because in fact, the machine the, the the machine learning workflow is not something linear. You never ended. Like I said, I, I, we discussed a little bit one of the, the return when I when I train the model. Usually, I need to change the hyperparameters, return it, and and and, and training again. But sometimes I need to have more more data. And when I train it, I'm okay. I generate data. The data. The, the model will return to, to the device, but sometimes during the time we have a kind of model leakage, the model will change. Everything changes in the world, you know? So we need to, suppose you have developed a tiny machine uh, equipment to face detection, for example, to, to, to turn on lights, for example, in, in, your, in your office. And that was developed in, 19, in, in 2019, two years ago. But the 2020, everybody starts to use masks, change everything. You no, know? so it's something. It's, it's alive. Work with the machine learning. It's a, always a live experience, never ended. So, so and 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 again, uh, data is the, the most important thing. As I don't need to stress because Professor Vijay stresses this a lot. But uh, you know, this is a continuous cycle. We start with good data. Return to the model, do the inference, create more more data, etc. 
Okay, perfect. So uh, the first thing so, that we, we should do is go to device here. Okay, so I say I go to device and I need to connect the device. So, so what device are you connect? I, I can hear, I can hear, I connect a new device. They give us several, several uh, possibilities. Usually when uh, we will do this in some, pre in some sessions before, before let's say the, 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 the second big workshop that we will do, and we, we, we stress how to connect the, 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 those kind of components or those kind of, uh, of uh, devices to the, to the impulse. Today, we do something uh, more simple. What do you do? We will connect a, a normal cell phone. This is a smartphone, a normal. This is not a, the, the new one. This is a, a iPhone 6, I suppose, five or five, uh, five four or five years ago. So it, it's enough. You, you don't need it. The state of the art, but you need you need a smartphone with some sensors inside, at least with the same sensors or the main sensors that you have here. I will I will discuss this a little bit more. So how we do the connection? So it's, it's not it's not complicated. For example, I use the I, I want to use mobile phone. Perfect. So I said I, I, I press here, show the barcode. What do you do here? I open my camera. I open my camera here, okay? And when I do this here, I press the camera, will, will, will appear, a, a, let's say a, a link. When you click the link, what, what have done here is our cell phone was connected. He did all the other ones that have connected before, but this telephone here is the, uh, is the is the K K K six blah blah blah? This guy we connect. You see this kind of uh, of display here. Okay, let me show you here. Okay, it's also important. And before that, only to have to give you an, an idea what they're talking about. You no, know? when I when you say but I used cell phone to do to do the the, the workshop. Yes, but as I said. When I when I when I talking about using a cell phone, in fact, what I'm doing here is working with the sensors that I have here inside the inside the inside my 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 smartphone. So, for example, if I'm using if I'm using this kit, for example, this kit we have a camera. Okay, it's the same camera. It's not the same quality, but this is the same device that we use here. In fact. Uh, uh, this camera, I don't know, this camera should be one or two megapixels. We don't need that. Usually you will do 96 pixels by 96 pixels, for example, to, to, to run an image in, in very small in very small sensors. But it's important, one thing is very important. I can collect data with this, this cell phone and after that make the deploy in this device because both devices has camera. What do you do? is some pre-preparation. The, 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 the image that will be captured by the camera needs to be, be pre-processed to shrink and became, became a small to be running in a model, including the same here. This guy is a VGA, for example, okay? But at the end of the day, uh, this camera will also shrink the image to, to run in our model, because at the end, we, what we want is to run models inside the, inside the, the, the device. This, uh, this Arduino that we use, that we use during the, the, our network, our academic network, he has a, a IMO, okay, an inertial, inertial model, that inside this inertial model, we have accelerometer, gyroscope, and magno, magnometer, okay? It's the same. The cell phone, all cell phones has more or less the same. Okay, because you have you do GPS with the cell phone, you know, the, the cell phone knows when you move that. So what do you do? You use the the device that you have inside. Today, for example, you use you do a, a example using the accelerometer only here. Okay, that we use here, and at least, but not in the last, but not least, you have the microphone. Okay, this this device it, we have a digital microphone here. Okay, and when I this Arduino, I have a, a very good digital microphone that we make make some samples in the 16 megabits. And 
and this this uh, cell phone also has a microphone. So when I when I use a, a, a cell phone for our our experiments, is the same we do here, including the data that I collect with the cell phone. I can after uh, deploy the, this that data here, okay, and the, and the will work. Usually in real projects, you should try as much as possible with the same data data that you connect in your sensors for when you deploy. Depend of the case. But for example, you're talking about image, I can do both. Sound, I can do both, something like that, okay? Uh, perfect. The next, we go to, to once I have the, the cell phone connected or my end, my end device connected, uh, we need to capture data, correct? Okay, but before capture the data, let me do one thing more. What do you do? What means, cap what means capture data? We need to define what do you want to do? For example, in this experiment, what I want to do with you guys is to do a gesture reclassification. What you do is, I took my phone here, okay? I would like to do something like, I you to go up and down, for example. I go left and right, and I do some circles. When I do this, what I'm doing, and, and do nothing. What I want to do, in fact, is using the, the accelerometer that you have inside here is took the three axes from this accelerometer, the X, Y, and Z, the data from, from, from this, and collect the data that's, that are generate the electrical signal, the time series electrical signal that are generated by this guy. And this guy will send, will be collected as a, as a data set. We transform this using NumPy. We will use this as, as a matrix, is a, a tensor with several uh the, the, this data we pre-process and use in our in our model so that's the idea that you do okay so we turn to our project okay um and return, uh, return to our project here let's say we, we, we have the device ah one comment it's actually i think it's inter interesting here i i i will try to collect the data Okay, I, I will collect, collect data here. Okay, perfect. But uh, something happened because I'm not seeing my device here. And when I, if I open my, my, my telephone, whoa, it's not connected. Because we took uh, more than three minutes and, and my screen turned off. Once, the only thing that I must do is do the refresh. Refresh your browser. Okay, we refresh the browser. When we refresh the browser, We'll have okay again. And look, I'm seeing here, I have the phone, uh, 4K, pa, 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 4K, it's, my, it's my, my, my phone. I can check here. Uh, it's here, look, it's green. My cell phone is okay, okay? So I'm in data acquisition, okay? I, what do you do? When I, when I, when I came here, look, for this phone, I know that I have a accelerometer, I have a microphone, I have a camera. Okay, this is the positional, but it's, it's, it, we don't need it here. But it's uh, the most important here is the accelerometer, microphone, and camera. Those are the, the, those are the sensors that we use during our seminar. In this case here, we work with, with the accelerometer, perfect. The, the system will give us here, ah, okay, Five five seconds of uh, coll data collection. It's okay. Um, so, you know, I will put ten seconds here. I can put ten seconds here, or ten milli, ten thousand milliseconds. Okay, perfect. The frequency. Look, the interesting. When I connect the phone, the edge impulse knows or define it that the, the 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 frequency that we use sample will be sixty two point five hertz. If you have another device, it's different. You change here. Okay, so. We start sample. Oh, but sorry. Oh, look. Sample what? I need to do something. So uh, some label. We are talking about uh, supervised machine learning. So with supervised machine learning, all the data that I collected, we need to know what the data, what that data is uh, we are talking about. So in, in this case here, let's say it's uh, up and down. Up, up and down, okay? And we start, we start to, to sample. 
Back to sample. Five, four, three. Sample, sample, sample. Now it's uploading. And we have here. Let me reduce a little bit here. Look, here we have. So what this is my remember the the um, the accelerometer is in the in the in the board that I that I show you guys. So usually what the, because I'm doing this. The, the for them z is this one y is this one and x is this one so you can see we did this so look at the interesting the y x have been moving here okay and the other axis the x and the z is more or less i didn't of course a little bit i moved but uh, i try to use only one direction so this is it let let do ah again i took i took a time disappear here Again, refresh. It's okay. And uh, let's start again, but now let's say I do circle. Okay, for down circle here. I will start sample. I will start to, to sample. Ooh, I forgot how to do it. So I took a little bit of time to start. Let's see what's going on. Look, when you see here, we realize that, oh, oops, I, I, I lose a few seconds here and I have the signals here. Perfect, we have, a, of course, I move. In fact, I, I move a little bit in this direction, no? but a little bit only, but at the most I, I, I change, I change the, the, X, the X and the, and the Y. Uh, the good thing is, if you took this, if you mm, this is this is bad for me because I don't want this was I, I made a mistake because this would be uh, uh, would be something like idle when I do nothing. You can come here, for example, and uh, split sample. The Edge Impulse Studio will give you. I only want uh, let's say I put here. Let's see. I put this, I remove this, remove this. I want to capture this segment. So I said split. So you see here, now I have my signal, only the, 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 the movements, because I'm inter interested in that. Why that? Because uh, during the training, I have, for example, Will be one case that I would like. Also, it's important. I would like to start to to check when the when the the cell phone is in idle. So I I, I want to to have the cell phone doing nothing. Okay. And you have here. At the end, I move a little bit, but in general, it's something that is completely different from the other cases. Okay. Well. You say, but uh, it's, it seems a little bit silly. No, but look, suppose that that uh, this is not a cell phone. This is a accelerometer, and this accelerometer, for example, is 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 in is inside your one box that you have, or a container, something like a, a, that was uh, travel around the world. You can train in this guy, for example. To do some movements for if we go to, to, to the ocean, to do this, you know, to do something like this, to do this kind of movement, to go up and down. But for example, you can't you can't, for example, have this kind of movement, for example. So you can train that uh, wow, if this is moving in something different, we'll have some we'll have some problem or something happened during the transport. And the good thing is we can do this with a very small device with a very small amount of battery. Put inside a box, very cheap, a container, for example, and you know this container is capturing all the all the online data of, from the, the accelerometers, and doing the inference. It's okay, okay, okay. It's moving, it's going up and down. I know it's it is a forklift that have been working. It's a movement of the ship, but 
you know, if something different, of course, you can also have that as anomaly detection, for example, you can, you, you can have it. And when this, the, the container arrive, uh, the, 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 the port, for example, you can go to a, to a portal and, for example, using, I don't know, BLE, for example, get that information. But only information about the events that happen. No millions of data about the sensors. That was not make sense. Because in, during the ocean, you cannot uh, send all that, that information. You, you know how good is or how important this kind of thing is? Well, of course, uh, uh, let's see how I can take this. I have a problem here because uh, here. there is a the zoom <laughs> stuff here. For example, uh, in fact, let's say data acquisition, I put it here. So I, I moved the, the project because what I, I did before here in my, in my home, what I did was I did several times what I did, I collect a lot of idols, a lot of circles, a lot of up and, uh, up and down, a lot of uh, left and right. So, so I took, in this case, I took uh, around, around two minutes of, of, of this, one minute left and right, up and down, and circle. Those are my, my, four, my four classes that I have, correct? And of course, I need to have some test data, okay? In this case, I have around 80%, 79, uh, around 80% it's trained and 21% is test. So the test data is here. You can do two things. You collect everything. And after you collect, for example, when I collect all the training data, you can come here, okay? And move and move that data, specific data to the test set. I can do that, okay? Or, or you can collect the data specific for test, for test data or you collect everything or you download from a, from a, from outside, you can come here and perform and when you go, when you go to the dashboard, you come here and perform train test split. What do you do here? They, you do a balance more or less 80% of the data with the same distribution will be used for train and 20% with the same distribution more or less will be test. This is important because this test data will not be used for training, not be used, okay? We work only, only, only when you do the training, what do you do? We will train only with, with, with this 80%, the data. This will be used for training, okay? Perfect. The test will make, we make, a, uh, we re make a reservation to use that when we, we make the tests. We test the model, the complete model, okay? Okay, the next step is create the impulse that you do, okay? Uh, I return again for the, the, the previous one, only to show you. When I, when I enter here, it's, it's empty, okay? The, the impulse design is empty. We must define what should be done uh, with pre-processing and what should be done to classification because it is or a regression, whatever you want to do. At this point, the system doesn't know so much, but because you you capture um, data from accelerometers, mm, this is a serial data. The first thing here, okay, this I was make some tests, but uh, what's happened here? Ah, uh, sorry. This was I doing. I doing. Uh, I start to do another project here. But uh, again, let me let me take this out. Let me add an input block here. When I put this block here, when I when I open here, when but usually when you open for the first time, uh, should appear. Uh, he asked, "You work with image or you work work with time series?" No, no. I work including. Look, this star here. The edge impulse is telling you, look, I think that you should work with the, with the time series because it's accelerometer is is a, is a kind of data that's that's running over the time. Okay, so I I entered this. Okay, and they will gave us a, a suggestion. Look, uh, use two seconds of window with a slice window of 80, 80 milliseconds. What, and with the frequency is the frequency that was the data was captured. 
this was we entered in the seminar in two weeks we went in detail about that because we're talking about time series we need to choose a window that at least give us uh let's say an idea about uh, we, we, we work with the data that inside those windows each one of the, that windows will be the data that we use for our process each one of our, our instance but for why why he suggests in two seconds because in case what we are doing when i do this look i'm talking about cycles that was around one second 1.5 seconds something like even when they do this these are more or less the cycles uh, okay this is this the this this data is serial but it, there is a kind of repetition and two seconds i think that they capture the most of that movement so perfect so look if you do nothing the the studio will give you this idea so automatically they will ask what do you should do after okay so you come here and they said okay there's a lot of things that you can do but he said to us they start here look seems that you are analyzing seems that uh, you are analyzing uh, or repetitive emotion that's our case in this case the best thing is using spectral analyze we took that two seconds and extract some spectral uh, uh, data from that what's the we use the fft fast Fourier transformer to see the frequencies that uh, we are working there i need to, to go a little bit uh, fast no <laughs> so so i i do this here okay and the end uh, of course you do the classification the same thing here if you come here uh you can use classification you can use anomaly detection or can use regression in our case we use uh, classification why because you have decide that you uh, that uh, we would like to classify circle wide or left and look that the labels was automatic automatically captured from the data so that's good so oh perfect so what i did pre pre-process classification okay in the output will be these four labels so let me save this impulse here fail why <gasps> here here save okay so perfect i saved the the what we did here let's do uh because movie here but it doesn't matter the the next part i need to, to be more quickly the next part is to to see the spectral to do to do the pre-processing if you come here you see all the data for example uh, for example this one circle look when you move here you see you see the windows okay and the interesting for example when i see here you, you see all the 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 frequency that we are doing if i if i'm here for example let's say uh, up and down i don't up and down here for example one example one example look in this case i have the great majority of the frequencies is two seconds in this case i was a little bit faster here the edge impulse you give us they they sell they sell us look you put some filter because you are talking about low low frequency etc the order of the filter doesn't matter like he gave us an idea i said okay i will what i do i will save those parameters okay they said okay now we have all that windows i said let's generate the features what what uh, 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 sorry here generate the features what do you do then you take all our data and took the the windows and slice everything you know in uh in in, in our data set at the end they they use umap umap for uh, for uh dimension reduction here because only for us to to give an idea oh it's good look here is up and down here's a circle here is the the left the right here's the idol look this is a good a good uh, reference seems that the data 
is, is well distributed when I did the, the dimension reduction using UMAP. So it's a good idea, it's a good, it's a good uh, uh, in advance, a, a good signal that our model will work, work good. And he's talking that uh, we use four kilobyte, kilobytes of RAM, perfect. I have much more than that in our, my phone and in, in my Arduino. And only eight milliseconds for do this pre-processing, perfect. The next, I'm following the, the, the line down here. I, I, once I create I, uh, the impulse, I went to the, the spectral. The next is the NN classifier. In the, and and, the, and the, look, here's gray because I need to, to do that, okay? And here's green because I really did the pre-processing. Now it's uh, the classifier. The same way they gave us, the studio gave us an idea, look, I think that for training this, we will need 30 epochs. Epochs is the number of times that you need to run, okay, uh, your model during the training using your training data, okay, with a learning rate of uh, 0 0.0005. If you want to change, you change it. But let's use what they are suggesting. They are suggesting I'm using a layer, an input layer of three, uh, 33 features because this is mandatory because all the data that came from, from the, that window of data, the serial data, was transformed. We will, do, we will explain this in detail during the seminar. We transformed this in the RM, RMS values of the, the, the X, uh, the FFT, power of the X, et cetera. So we transform all that data. If you're talking about the two seconds of uh, that data, you're talking about uh, hundreds, hundreds of data, correct, with a 62 uh, uh, hertz per second in, in so it's a lot of data no but it's i only i reduce to with the pre-processing to 33 uh, data this will be the, my input layer and we use two hiding layers one hiding layer with 20 neurons and one with 10 uh, neurons look i don't know much about that but they are suggesting me to use this kind of a uh, dnn uh, architecture so and the, and the output is fixed. It's four, four neurons of, of output because I have four classes. Okay, so the input is fixed, the number of features that I have, the output is fixed. But do inside this deep learning uh, architecture, I, they suggest us two layers, 20 and 10 neurons. You say, no, no, I want to put more. Okay, it's a density, it's a convolution, it's a, a, a reshape or flatting. If you decide, you can decide the other layers that you want, or, or change the layers here, or change the number of neurons, for example, etc. Okay, but again, I say I I like I I, I trust those guys, so let's let's uh, let's train. Just take a little bit to train. So we'll, uh, so they have 13, 14, 16. Blah, blah, blah. You can see they are calculating for us. At the end, this in case you're not so good because I changed the, 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 the window to, to one second, but only for you guys to have an idea, okay? Here. So in this case, you know, what, they, what you show us, what you show here, uh, I, in fact, I made some tests and the, some of the, 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 the samples was not so good. So it's mixed here. But important here, when you make the training, you can select here if you are using a quanta, quantized or, or a float. Usually we work with a quantized, like I said before, we, the model, we shrink the, the parameters to eight bits. We have the accuracy here. We have the confusion metrics here. And here, we can, for example, see what's going on. Why, why he made a mistake here? So I can click here and analyze the data and see why the reason they, they made some kind of mistake and they, they changed the data or returned the data, okay? And here it's very important. Uh, we have an idea about how much the RAM and how much a flash of ROM that we need for this model, this kind 18K, so it's a very simple model and this is the peak of RAM. Okay, so here I have my model trained. 
So let, let's return to the to the presentation because I have a, not a lot of not time. Only here, as you said, you you see everything. How the connections? Example that said not connection. We we do here the tests. We collect the data. Okay, and uh, we design the impulse. So I explain all all the steps what we did here on live, okay? We pre-process the data. We generate the features, okay? Here, we have the model. And, and uh, pay attention in the presentation when you receive the, that I try to connect each one of the steps of the studio with our normal machine learning workflow. And here we have in, uh, the model. I, here is another way to see the model. If you want to see the model, you can download the model, including I, I used to do that. You, you, can, uh, you can download the model and work with, with this model outside. In fact, we, we can also uh, download, uh, I, I'll show you in a, in a few seconds, we can you know, load a, um, a notebook with all everything that was done, I'll show you. Um, so once you train the model, you have the result of the model, Okay, you need to evaluate the model. You do this with the tests. So you can you can do live classification or you can you can use uh, model testing. When you do model testing, okay, when you do model testing, it's here. Like I like I told you, what do you do is I you enter, for example, all data that you have in the test that was not used, and this data. Will be, will, be, will be tested here, okay? And uh, we will return the, the accuracy of the test. Once you have this test, we need to do the deploy, okay? If, 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 if we were, uh, if you have here that, that you do in the future, if you have, for example, all this data, I would like to do a deploy to now our Arduino. So what you need to do is to select the Arduino here, okay? We'll select the Arduino, okay? Come in here and ask to build the model. So a library, a TensorFlow Light Micro Library will be created and will be downloaded to our, to our computer, okay? Here, one thing that you can do, you can, you can come here, for example, because remember, I'm, I'm connected here, correct? I'm a, remember, I, I have my, my cell phone connected. If you go down in your, in, your, in your cell phone, I can say here, switch to classification mode. When I do this, what you do is, as impulse, we will deploy the model that we have uh, just, just did it. Fail to load. We did something wrong here. <laughs> and uh, and uh, we can do a, a live test here. Okay, so we switch to classification mode here. We build a project, we make the deploy. Okay, and you can see all the, 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 the steps here. Okay, I'm, I'm running out of time. Sorry, guys. In summary, what do we need to do or what, what do you do during the seminar with the Edge Impulse Studio is go all over the machine learning model here. We will capture data, we will pre-process data, audio will do different. With the image, we will do only crop the image. Uh, uh, we will design the model. The model will be different from, from image or from, from this case, uh, from accelerometers. We train the model, we evaluate and you convert and make the inference. During the seminar, we will do using cell phones. But, but again, the process are the same. Okay, and with everything, all the theory that we will develop here, we will we we'll apply this uh, we we'll apply this in, in in the next seminar when you use the, our 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 device. Before before I finish here, uh, I left in the last the last page for you guys some additional free resources that I, I advise you guys to go to go and try to see. Try to use Google Colab. Google Colab is a fantastic uh, a tool where you can, you know, see uh, what's going on. Um, make make your projects. Uh, there is a lot of, uh, 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 like I said, it's very important to know Python. 
uh, uh, J Jake Vanderplus from Google, there is a very good 100-page book. It's free. And uh, they have all the notebooks. And you can follow uh, a lot of uh, uh, bases of Python. Also, Kaggle, they have, a, a, they have uh, uh, several lessons very quickly. You do in one day, one weekend. You can review all Python stuff. The same with, with the TensorFlow in Keras. Kaggle also have, have such kind of, uh, of uh, a tool for education tool for you guys. And try to see some, some real experience. For example, uh, this one that the Marcos and I, and I did about listen temperature using the Arduino Nano uh, in Huckster. We have this uh, experiment or motion with, uh, with the Huskyberry Pico that I did. Or one of my, one of my, my students in Tajuba did another one. Uh, looking for image uh, disease, disease problems with the, with coffee the plants and the last but not least today is the 30 day of the imagine 2021 that's a event from Imagine Pulse and all day today I see they starting two hours now or something like or one hour there is a lot of uh, very good presentations including with uh, some panel with with uh, Professor VJ from Harvard people from Edge Impulse, people from industry, from Hackster. They will show several projects with TNML. So it will be a four or five hours of a very, very nice uh, presentation, much better than mine here. And uh, I, I suggest you guys to go there. If not today, at least enter in the, in the, the link that, uh, that is here in the presentation and you can, uh, you can go, okay? Uh, Professor Zenaro, sorry about that. I think I took more than I was expecting. <laughs> Not at all. That was extremely useful and interesting as as usual. Super. Thank you very much. So, well, I would start with the first question, which is the last one, which is about the presentation. Will you share the presentation? Yes. Okay. But I already. Yeah. Okay. We can we can do this today, Marco. Just after. Yeah, okay. I should be able to get the presentation posted really quickly. Uh, the video. Yeah. It takes time for that to process in the Zoom cloud and wow, then pass through all the channels to, <laughs> for me to get it. So, I'll get it up as soon as I can. Well, so, so we so will good. we will post the link on Discord. So you need to be online on Discord to get that that link so we get the, the community going. So Brian, do you want to yeah uh, sure I have yeah. a couple of things there were so um Marcelo thank you first of all that was awesome. Um, there was a lot of activity in the chat. So I'm gonna to try to summarize a couple of the things that we, we talked about and ask you a couple of questions. I think in the end, there were a couple of questions about uh, at a high level about like customization uh, in Edge Impulse. So, you know, there are a couple related questions of, you know, can I import my own model type? Can I use my own pre-processing blocks? Can I, you know, uh, use something that's pre-trained and work off of that? Um, yes, yes, for sure, for sure. Uh, uh, it's very good questions. First of all, when you do data acquisition, uh, we, we talk, of course, about uh, about uh, taking data data from a device. But of course, we can upload. For example, I can come here and upload any data that you want. You can come here and choose your files, okay, and from your computer, for example. So you can you can take files, for example. Usually. You can you can you can uh, CSV files, for example. I, I could, for example, took all all the data from those accelerometers and off completely offline in my computer or my device, and and take that you know and as a CSV, you know, like an Excel file, we can took that and upload to 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 the studio. I can use photos in uh, in, in J, JPG. You can or or sound or a wave or more complex data is a, is, as a JSON, for example, format. So any type of data you can you can go up. That's the first thing. Second, for example, I, I can tell you guys next week. I think that you go, I, I can export a little bit with uh, with some a project from our students that they are developing in Tajuba. For example, the students develop a, a device for an ECG device to measure the heart, for example, people. And of course, they do a lot. They, they work with a big data sets from uh, you know from from uh, fr from 
from, from Germany, from hospitals in Germany. So they took all of those data, the electro, electrocardiograms data, so the, the, the heartbeats. So, so they processed the data, they filtered, they split, and so at, at the end of the day, they had all the, the heartbeats, one, the heartbeats, the one, 1D, 1D image, let's say, or 1, 1D uh, data. Dead Impulse was not prepared for that. So what we did, when, when we came here to data acquisition, for example, sorry, uh, to impulse design, what we did here, we come here, for example, we say, well, this will be, when I, when I add here, I said, oh, this, this case here yeah, will be raw data, raw data. What means when I put raw data here? Everything that enter will pass. We don't know all that stuff, for example, the, the, the calculate, the frequency, blah, blah, blah. And that was, so I, I prepared the data in, in, in the cloud, let's say, do the preprocessor and enter in, in the, here, here. And when I, when I went to the classifier, what we need to do, for example, we will enter here and, uh, and this is three dots here and said, switch to expert mode. And what we did here, look, here we have everything in, everything in TensorFlow to Keras, no? So the model, sequential, added density, 20, added density, 10. So, so everything is here. So what we need to do is we, 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 we de delete the everything and enter with our model, the model that have developed because it's much more complex. So instead, if we start to put here, we have everything outside, we enter here, we, we compile, et cetera, and use what that impulse uh, does at the end that was fantastic, that was a deploy. They put everything together and, and in, a, in a library, let's say, put together a library that could be used inside the, the, the Arduino the device. In fact, we are using Arduino and the ESP32, for example. So and I think a lot of flexibility. Of, mm -hmm. And I think Marcelo, there's also a similar expert mode for pre-processing where you can go and create your own yes. pre-processing as well. No, in fact, uh, for pre-processing, or you can do outside, or you can design your pre-processing if you want, and you can enter with your block. It's possible to do that. So Edge Impulse uh, give, give you, but uh, you, you should be an expert in, in data processing, so, or correct? But it's possible to do this and create a, a, a block and uh, put the block uh, to connect. For example, in, that, in, in the case here, we use the, the spectral analysis. Uh, uh, for, for audio, you use CFMM, but uh, you can use the, I don't know, the Rovi model. You can create it and put there with my special. Yes, it's possible. I think while you're talking about the cardio, one of the one of the one person was asking about good sensors for EEG data. I know you did ECG, but um, maybe this is something to take offline. But I'm wondering if you have thoughts on hardware software for that because I was like, I actually don't, and I feel like Marcelo would be the expert there. <laughs> the, the, the 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 questions about the sensor. The sensor is a electrical yeah. signal. I mean, yeah, it's, it's, like, it's the real. What hardware would you use to do that? Like, do you need a special DSP? Can you just use any of no, these? No, no, no. Use that. We, we, you can use straight the, the analog, uh, the analog uh, converter that you have in Arduino, because the ECG it, it's only only connectors that you put in your heart. You want what do you do? Is you capture electrical signal that is is electrical signal that came from 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 your heart, and this electrical signal. You enter in in your uh, uh, ADC, your uh, analog uh, digital converter, and you convert to digital data, and that's it. Cool. Um, I think there's one other like uh, high level question was, um, suppose that you're using your phone for collecting data, you know you have a particular accelerometer in that phone, but then you go deploy it on the Arduino, which has a different accelerometer. Yeah. You know. Um, is there any guarantees that it will work well or there any no. things you can do to make sure that it will work better maybe? The, well, maybe you, you, you should do some kind of a pre-processing. That, that's the point. Because depending on the case, uh, sometimes you can't, it's not, for example, like the ECG, for example, you, 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 we use several different data that use the ECGs that have different types. So what we need to do, we need to filter 
because you would you know take out the frequency that we not, we don't want it after you need to to change the amplitude so let's say at the end of the day accelerometer is more or less of the same the same level but uh probably if you use different types of accelerometers you need to to go to the data, data sheet see the characters and do some twist as a pre-processing probably but uh doing that you can use again in embedded engineering, the best thing is I'm doing a project with, 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 that we use a specific sensor. Let's use that. But for example, uh, like remember, Professor VJ, for example, in uh, in the EDX course, they, he told us about uh, anomaly detection uh, data set that was developing uh, in NASA, NASA, in ASSA, you know, uh, that the people use for, for was bearing, running. So they use that to detect anomaly. I mean, they use a, three special uh, accelerometers in that case. Uh, we collect the also some uh, audio, but we can use that uh, that accelerometers, that data, and use it in using our in our project. Of course, you need some twist something, but uh, it's possible. In fact, this will be almost the reality. <laughs> I think that also comes up to one interesting point, which is, you know, how do you think about what pre-processing to use? I know, you know, how do you think through what it is? How do you suggest people go about, you know, if somebody is new to this domain of whatever, what's the best way to start to figure that out? Well, uh, uh, this is something, this is, this is exactly something that the Edge Impulse Studio helped us. He like I like I show he put a kind of a start. Look, I think that if you're talking about a better and better uh, project, like say, oh, let, oh, I'm talking about the movement. Oh, this is accelerometer. Mm, this is I need some spectral analysis. Mm, I'm using for uh, uh, keyword spotting. I'm trying to see, you know, Alexa, Google, uh, the detecting detecting key, keywords. Mm, in this case, I need you to change to transform audio. In, in 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 image, for example, no. So uh, uh, you must have an idea what what should be done. But uh, Edge Impulse will give an, uh, give you uh, a uh, direction. But the important thing is, we can use use this kind of a, of a tool to start to understand. It's that's because it's good to to start with something more simple. Well, okay, left movement or keywords or or image that was I can I can have benchmarks. I can a lot of people that made projects with these three main streams: so accelerometers, uh, uh, audio, and uh, and uh, image. And uh, once you learn about that, of course, if you go if you do something by yourself, you need to go deeper. I mean, uh, at the end of the day, we are engineers. We need to to understand. So maybe. And also it's important, we must think about not to work individually, but to work in teams. So like in data science, like uh, we, we, we inside data science, uh, we say data, data scientists doesn't exist. They are unicorns. When you're talking about data science, you're talking one guy that knows a lot about computer, another guy that knows a lot about machine learning, about the statistics, another guy that knows the, the area that we're talking about. We, uh, this is a, this is a, project that will be, will, be, will be working in a medical area. I need to have a doctor to work with us. Do you know what I mean? So at, at the end of the day is a team that will work in such kind of projects. So those kind of tools and what do you do, what do you see in our seminar in two weeks time will be how we can have a, a general overview. And this is the starting point. And after that, you need to 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 go to go deeper to have your 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 hands dirty and do a lot of work because and, and again th this is nice I I was very simple I took a couple of data here and it was all oh, fantastic but at the end of the day seventy percent of all the the work that must be done is with data as Professor yeah. Vijay said last week two weeks ago we including we are moving from the machine learning world is moving from model centric to data centric. So in the last, as he said to us, he gave us the clue, guys, in the next 10 years, data, data, data. So as much we work with data, know how the data works, what, what we need, what do you want, what is the result of my project? Let's go to the, to the data, let's work with the data, let's clean the data, connect everything. 
And after that, the model, everything, you'll be more or less not complicated. We'll try to use what we have tested and, and we know that working. Mm -hmm. No, I think that's Thank important. Thank you so much, Marcelo. That was wonderful. And I think we, I mean, you replied to most of the questions. And I just wanted to add that this is just the appetizer of what we will do in two weeks' time. So we will get into, you know, the details of most of these, uh, you know, processes, and we're going to have lots of fun, and we're going to exchange data, right, Marcelo? So yes. not only uh, you're going to collect data with your phone, but we will have all the phones sending data, you know, uh, to the same system, so we'll have more data, and same for, uh, you know, keyword spotting and so on. So we'll have lots of fun. Thank you again, Marcelo. Thank you very no, thank much, you. Brian, for moderating the thank questions. You, and we meet in one week time. One week. Where we're going to discuss about our network, the way forward, and you know, the seminar, and we're going to have some interesting case studies. So until then, stay safe, and we meet in one week time. Thank you. And see you on Discord. <laughs>